On December the 11th, 1979, the Norwegian Nobel Committee announced that year's winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, a Catholic nun who dedicated her life to the service of the poorest of the poor. Forty years later, in Rome, the Sacred Music and Art Foundation remembered this extraordinary event and dedicated the 18th edition of the Sacred Music and Art Festival to her memory. Our charity is to lead people to God through art and music, while that of Caritas is through direct help. In a world where good and evil are confused and beauty can be reduced to mere subjective opinion, year after year the Sacred Music and Art Foundation proposes a series of concerts in which sacred music reminds the world of God's greatness and beauty. Works by Mozart, Beethoven, Haydn, and others from the Russian Orthodox tradition gave life to the 18th edition of the festival and did so in the extraordinary setting of Rome's papal basilicas. As every year, the first event on the program was the celebration of Holy Mass in St. Peter's Basilica. During his homily, Cardinal Angelo Comastri, honorary president of the foundation, reminded those present of the spiritual dimension of the festival. The life of Mother Teresa itself was a wonderful concert of good works and examples that made us reflect and still make us reflect. Now, it is up to us to continue the concert of good works. The aim of sacred music is to give glory to God and to sanctify the faithful. And what can be a better start to this festival than to begin it with the coronation mass by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart under the masterly direction of Tomomi Nishimoto in St. Peter's Basilica. Despite being a relatively brief work composed of six movements, the Mass in C major represents the beginning of Mozart's artistic maturity. The young composer was barely 23 years old when he composed this Mass in Salzburg in 1779. It was a period of profound suffering for Mozart, who had to face the death of his mother and the abandonment of his beloved one. The luminous tonality of C major seems to ignore the pain that the young artist had been experiencing, but in reality, it doesn't hide it. Mozart's suffering changes and is filled with hope in the power of God. During the last period of his life, Mozart's faith deepens. Aware of the dramatic aspects of human existence, he recognizes that man's life is illuminated by the love of God, and his work becomes an authentic act of faith.
Each movement of the coronation mass develops with a certain and joyful faith in the relationship between God and man. Redemption, grace, and glory prevail over sin, guilt, and suffering. Written for four soloists, a mixed choir and orchestra, Mozart's Coronation Mass is presented to the world as one of the most important works of sacred music in history. Thanks for watching. Stick around for more on Vaticano. The second appointment on the program of the 18th edition of the Festival of Sacred Music and Art is with the great Austrian composer Joseph Haydn, performed by the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. In the Papal Basilica of St. Paul's outside the walls, there is a crucifix that stands in front of the central baldachin. While the orchestra plays the last seven words of Jesus on the cross, the cross itself engages the audience.
In 1786, Franz Joseph Haydn composed this work commissioned by a Spanish canon from Cadiz, who asked him for an instrumental piece to accompany the Good Friday liturgical ceremonies. At that time, during the religious function, the bishop pronounced the last seven words of Jesus on the cross. After each phrase, he prostrated himself in prayer ten minutes before the crucifix and needed music that would elevate souls during those moments of meditation. This is how this work of extraordinary beauty and spiritual strength was born. Without abandoning the typical sweetness of his music, Haydn created this experimental work, composed of an introduction, seven adagio sonatas that lead the faithful through the last moments of Christ on the cross, and a conclusion that narrates, in music, the earthquake that struck Mount Calvary after the death of the Son of God. After Mozart's serenity and Haydn's sweetness comes the storm with Ludwig van Beethoven and his Ninth Symphony, again under the artistic direction of Tomomi Nishimoto. The Basilica of St. Paul outside the wall stands majestically as the perfect stage for the interpretation of the Ninth Symphony, the culmination of Beethoven's symphonic work. After years of isolation and depression for personal and health reasons, in 1824, now totally deaf, Beethoven surprises the world with this masterpiece that revolutionizes the tradition of the symphony. At the beginning of the work, Beethoven creates a tense atmosphere that gradually leads to an explosion of optimism in the last movement. But this joy isn't immediate. It's a feeling conquered with effort.
the silent loneliness to which Beethoven had to adapt due to the loss of his hearing, led him to listen to the world in a new way, transcending the sound of written and read notes. The first three purely symphonic movements are followed by the fourth, with the choir and soloists, who interpret Friedrich Schiller's poem, Ode to Joy. Through his experience with love and pain, Beethoven finds himself face to face with God, who transforms him in silence. In a few moments, we'll be back with more on Vaticano. Since 2002, the International Festival of Sacred Music and Art has dedicated one of its concerts every year to the promotion of ecumenical dialogue. After Mozart's serenity, Haydn's sweetness, and Beethoven's hope, the deep faith of the Russian people came to the festival. The festival closed the 18th edition in the Basilica of St. Mary Major with the men's choir of the Danilov Monastery in Moscow. In the repertoire, we find important treasures of the liturgical musical heritage of the Russian tradition, monastic music, spiritual poems of the Russian people based on liturgical texts, as well as the works of Western sacred music. Музыка — это 
aspect vechni. Music has an eternal aspect. It brings the wisdom of the centuries. It brings the national code. Russian music is the code of the Russian people. Italian music is the code of the Italian people, and so on. Each nation had its own genes and composers who composed and tried to transmit this music not only to the listeners of their country, but also to the listeners of this inner wealth and this inner fullness of the musical culture of this national spirit. One of the most moving moments of the concert was the musical interpretation of a poem by the Russian writer Timur Zulfikurov. During this performance, the soul of the Russian people and their deep Christian faith flooded the Basilica of St. Mary Major. Music has a great ability for pacification. It could stop any military action and calm the souls and minds of people, those who may want to change this world. They will not be able to do so unless they are deeply rooted in their national musical culture. Another significant moment was the participation of a young soprano who performed the Ave Maria by Schubert. With this concert, where East and West embrace under one God, the Pro Musica e Arte Foundation concluded its 18th edition of the Festival of Sacred Music and Arts in Rome.